On January 6, 2021, we saw something that many people called shocking. Supporters for President Donald Trump gathered outside the White House and then stormed the U.S. Capitol building, taking over for several hours due to the overwhelming of some Capitol Police, the allowance of these actions by other police, and the lack of enacting larger forces like the National Guard. As someone who consistently makes videos on this channel about film history, especially Disney history, I thought back to my favorite Disney film of the 21st century, Zootopia, and how it showcases themes that feel truly realistic to the current climate of politics and everyday life in the United States of America. My name's Josh Taylor, this is 1901, and today I want to talk about Zootopia and its larger social themes, about racism and classism, and how those themes showcase the sad, but real American values. Zootopia was released in 2016. If you haven't seen the film, I highly suggest it, but if not, let me give you a brief summary of what this film is on the surface. Judy Hopps grows up in a small town and dreams of moving to the big city. As a child and a creature of prey, she was bullied by predatorial animals. When she moves to the city of Zootopia, she finds a highly segregated place where she's picked on and bullied for being a small bunny who wants to be part of the police force. She's relegated to being a traffic ticket cop until she's able to volunteer to find a missing person and gets the help of Nick, a small time crook who she blackmails into helping her. As the story plays out, we learn that the missing person, an otter, was in fact not missing at all, but was actually drugged and turned into a vicious predator looking to kill. This lined up with several other instances where animals were drugged and turned vicious, all of whom happened to be predatory animals. The crime is solved when the arrest of politician Bellwether shows that she was the mastermind to the entire thing all along, bringing fear and an us versus them mentality to Zootopia. But let's dive deeper because I feel like there's a lot of key moments in Zootopia that showcase where American values have been and why they're toxic. First, this division of us versus them. Zootopia has a racism and classism problem. Despite living in the same city, the city is heavily segregated. And before you can say, but Josh, desert animals can't live in polar climates, maybe you've also seen the argument that poor people can't live in rich neighborhoods. Or maybe you remember Trayvon Martin, a black teen who was killed as he was walking through a quote-unquote neighborhood that wasn't his. Furthermore, the divide in mentality continues to be there, even when different types of animals live and work together. Judy grew up knowing which animals were prey and which were predators, and often feared predators as a bunny. She typically stuck to her kind. And when she catches our rogue otter who goes quote-unquote savage, she gives a press conference where she states the predators are biologically vicious. It's just who they are. But when she goes to talk with Nick, she doesn't even understand the hurtful things that she'd said about her friend and partner. Her fear of him and other predators had always been there. She just didn't say it out loud until that moment. Similarly, I grew up as a white person in America who was taught to always lock his doors in his vehicle when driving through rough neighborhoods, or to always lock up my house when I leave or when I go to bed at night. And that falls onto this us versus them mentality with race and class. And I'm sure I'm not the only person that has had this. How many of you can say that you've locked your doors while driving through a neighborhood you were unfamiliar with, or that you consistently lock your house at night? Or maybe some of you even have one of those uh, ring cameras on the front door of your house. How many of you have avoided certain neighborhoods in your cities and towns? And in the United States of America over the last four years, this divide between us and them has gotten way worse, as political leaders have used rhetoric to further their agenda. Despite being mostly peaceful, like 93% peaceful, activists and protesters in 2020 who came out in support of stopping racist behaviors and racial profiling from police were labeled as anarchists, as looters, as rioters. And on the other side of that, people who flew the KKK flag, people who were known neo-Nazis, and those who blindly followed President Trump and others like him, despite their bullying or name calling or general racist and sexist behaviors, were called patriots. 
Zootopia shows this by using a certain name, Savage. They use that name to describe the actions and mentality of criminals who just also happen to be predators. What we learn by the end of the film is that it wasn't the fault of the predators at all. It wasn't their biology that made them savage, but it was the mayor of the city who had abused them, drugged them, and then blamed them for all the wrongdoings. The fact that Judy approaches Nick like she'd done nothing wrong is a significant issue. Her racism and classism run so deep that she doesn't even know when she's said something offensive. She grew up being taught to fear others, and her parents were likely taught the same exact things as young rabbits. We could assume that mentality comes from the small town she's from, but the larger city definitely has those fears as well. They just aren't as blatant and upfront about it. And that same thing applies to the United States of America. Our racism and classism and sexism run deep. People can point to Abraham Lincoln and the ending of slavery, or maybe to the 1960s and the ending of segregation and say that we cured racism. But deep down inside, we all know that those events didn't completely cure racism or any kind of ism at all. Racism is part of the United States and its very values, not just in its history, but today. We've found ways to jail African Americans and other minorities for petty crimes, and then we label them as gangbangers or druggies or thugs. We consider black neighborhoods rough or ghettos, but in reality, the government doesn't allow the money to be allocated to those neighborhoods to help rebuild or to help solve problems for those neighborhoods. Rather than helping the homeless population that we see, we instead ignore them, call them crazy, call them lazy, and they get arrested just for existing. This kind of behavior and name calling, especially coming from a leader like President Trump, has only brainwashed those that follow him. When Bellwether gives away her big plan, she states that predators were the common enemy. She uses fear mongering to keep in power, creating an enemy by shooting Nick with a drug that would make him vicious. In real life, we don't have politicians drugging people, at least not knowingly, but they are brainwashing people. They use statements and language that makes everyone else look bad, except for those that follow the true patriots. And they believe that they have a common enemy. Those that are anti-Trump are labeled as socialists, as communists. They're labeled as un-American and traitorous, despite the fact that they've done none of those things. It's this kind of wording that keeps people in fear, hitching on to the same types of fears that people grew up learning. And for some of you watching this video, I know you'll immediately dismiss it. You're going to be down in the comment section telling me how wrong I am. You'll call me a leftist, a liberal, a soy boy, a libtard, or what other kinds of names that you can think of. But that only further proves my point. People have been brainwashed and they have a certain set of vocabulary that helps prove them right and me wrong. And this isn't a one way street. People who watch Trump supporters storm the Capitol on January 6, 2021, should have noticed that there was more than one type of person. For a long time, many considered those that were brainwashed to be poor or uneducated white people. But we did see educated people. We saw politicians and lawyers and nurses and doctors all march on those steps. Zootopia has a happy ending. They lock everybody up at the end of the film. And the city seems more peaceful. But this is really only a half truth. We have to realize that this problem isn't a political issue. We're locking everybody up saves the day. The United States of America is a deeply troubled nation that has a lot of roots and problems with racism, sexism, classism, and more. Giving the correct comeuppance to those who tried to terrorize our US Capitol is really only step one. I made a video last summer in 2020 when the Black Lives Matter movements were in full swing. I made a video about why anti-racism matters, and I told a story about the making of Song of the South. You can see that video here if you'd like to. I still stand by that piece. We have to be anti-racist, anti-classist, anti-sexist. We have to call people out for their problematic behaviors. And we have to raise the next generation without these traits. We have to be inclusive in how we teach our history, not just simply skimming over the parts that make us look bad. Listen. I watched the news just like everybody else did on January 6th, but I was truly unsurprised because I saw the United States continuing down this road for a long time. And this was long before the Black Lives Matter protests of 2020 
long before Barack Obama was in office, long before segregation had stopped existing. This is a multi-generational problem that may take multiple generations to fix. But it starts now, at least it should, with us. And we have to take the first steps here, whether you're an American citizen or a citizen of the world. And those first steps may not be easy. In fact, it will probably be extremely challenging. But someone has to do it. Might as well be us. Thanks for watching this video. I want to say that I had fun making it. I always love making videos. I do, and I love hearing uh, responses from people. But this was not a video that I intended to make. It's not a video I really wanted to make. Uh, and yes, Zootopia is my favorite film because it does highlight a lot of these problems, but it isn't a film that I thought I would be uh, revisiting on this channel in 2021. But I do have a lot of exciting things coming in the future, so uh, I hope that you'll check out some of the things that are going on on this channel. Go to the back catalog, find some of the stuff uh, if you've just found this channel. If you're new to the channel, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, uh, subscribe, yada yada, all that kind of youtube -y stuff. But more importantly, take care of each other. Uh, take care of yourselves. Love you. And until next time, my friends, keep moving forward.